And welcome back, folks. When I look at the world today in 2011, I find it fascinating that the average person cannot see it the way I do. I mean, I know that each individual perspective is exactly that. It is individual and it is unique. But again, it fascinates me that people do not question why they have to struggle so hard and pay so much money in order to live on the planet they were born on, in order to live in the country they were born in. Why it is such a struggle and why people are constantly thrown on the trash heap, houses are foreclosed on, and life gets harder and harder for everybody, while our governments strip mine the planet and claim that they're doing it because of the economic benefits it will bring for the country. The coal seam gas mining that's happening here in Australia, the government tells us it's going to be a boon for the economy of the country, and yet everybody in the country is struggling to survive. The prices just keep going up and up. I would suggest it's a boon for the people who run the country, which is the Crown Corporation, but it's certainly not a boon for the country itself or the people who live within the country. And I find it fascinating that people don't question this more. It really, really does surprise me that people are so willing to simply accept things for being the way they are. There's a man who lives in Brisbane. He is 75 years old. He has a wife who is disabled. And he's had a hard life. He's done a lot of work and he is at a stage in his life now where he's getting pretty old. He's 75 and he needs some time out. He needs to be able to have some enjoyment in his life because he's worked hard for most of his life. And he's been living off his retirement money that he put away while he worked. But now he's got to a stage where he's run out of his retirement money because the price of everything has gone up so much to a ridiculous degree and completely unnecessarily too, of course, because this is the way the whole system works. And now here he is at 75 with his disabled wife, and he's unable to receive a pension because he has too many assets, namely because he owns the home that he lives in. And so the government will not give him any pension. They have increased his land tax. He's unable to pay his land tax, and so they're telling him he'll have to sell his house that he spent his life paying off. And... They're quite prepared to simply take that from him. Of course, they'll keep a lot of the money from the sale for the land taxes that they have imposed, which they have no right to impose. And they will steal everything they can off this old man and they will cast him onto the trash heap simply because he has now reached the end of his usefulness. And remember, folks, this old man who has worked all his life is about to be thrown on the trash heap by his servants, our servants, because our servants have taken over the mansion and they work as hard as they can to steal everything they can from their employers. Our servants are, of course, allowed to do this because the employers simply won't stand up and hold their servants accountable for their actions. And that's just one example of what's happening all around the planet it's happening in all of our societies. It's happening in every city. It's probably happening in almost every suburb. There will be someone who has a similar story. So all of these people will end up in homeless shelters and they will be looked on as the scum and the riffraff of society, the poor old person who never made it. And yet he worked his whole life. He spent his whole life paying off a house just so that he could have it stolen from him by the government as soon as he had outlived his usefulness. Of course, if he had been slightly more sociopathic and had maybe spent as much time as he could profiting from the needs of others, then perhaps he would have had more in his retirement fund and he would be cast on the trash heap a little bit later. But eventually, it will be the trash heap for everyone if we do not stand up and hold our servants accountable for their actions. See, everybody's talking about ascension and they're talking about the rapture and they're talking about higher consciousness and this 
greater wave of awareness that is due to happen to humanity. But very few people will apply it to the reality around them and very few people realize that this world that we live in now, we can transform this world into what it is supposed to be if we simply pay attention to what is going on inside of us and realize how it is affecting what is going on around us. One of the most complicated and yet most simple of all spiritual teachings is the belief that by changing what is inside of you, you can change the world around you. And there are so many people that have criticized this type of teaching and said that's impossible for me to change my energetic state. It's not suddenly going to make the walls turn a different color. And they usually approach it in such a ridiculous way. You know, if I change my energetic state, it's not going to change my physical surroundings. They go into this logical fallacy type of thing. And people have often failed to understand how they can change the external world by changing their internal state. And the answer is simple, folks. It's through practical application. It's through balance. Because if you are in this correct emotional state, this balanced harmonic emotional state, how do you possibly even expect it's going to change the world around you if you fail to be the bridge between the two worlds, between the two states? You need to apply what you're feeling to the world around you. You need to be the change. You need to always act in compassion. You need to treat everybody as yourself and respect everybody as you would be respected. And if some rule or piece of legislation has been put in place by the society that we have constructed that suggests or forces you to act in any way that is not compassionate, then it must be ignored. It must be stood against. Because such things are in disharmony with the human race, such things are in disharmony with the laws of God and the conscience of God, such things are in disharmony with your conscience, if you would simply look and see it. And there's a sign-up saying, don't feed the homeless, and there's someone starving in front of you. What are you going to do? Well, I know what I'd do. You must always act in compassion, folks, because that's how we change the world. We've reached a time now in our history where it all comes down to the human race. I mean, obviously, our system is so corrupt that it's going to allow the world to become what it has. So there's no point turning to the system in an attempt to find solutions to these problems. The solution will never be found from the same place that caused the actual problem. And really, when you look at the world, folks, you've got Fukushima just absolutely going off. You've got the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, and I believe that that is still leaking oil, folks. There have been reports of that. We've got all this fracking that's being carried out all around the country, and we've got the chemical spraying that's taking place in our skies. I don't care what people say when they put forth these arguments in an attempt to debunk the chemtrail phenomena. What I saw here over Byron Bay Monday last week was phenomenal. There were planes that were flying very high. They were dropping trails and they were turning around and flying back the way they came. And there was at least 30 streaks across the sky at one stage in Byron Bay. And I had reports that it was the same all the way down to south of Sydney. So there is no question that our skies are being sprayed with some chemical. Just the strontium levels and the aluminium levels in the soil are a very good indication of that because the amounts that we're finding simply cannot come from natural means. So these sorts of things are occurring. We've got this gas hub being built at James Price Point. They're building a, a, an offshore rig to harvest natural gas from the shelf below the ocean, just off the coast of James Price Point as well. And this is a nursery area for whales, for the humpback whale. Apparently they have their babies a little bit further up the coast and then they come to this little sheltered area to 
rear the calves to get them strong enough for ocean voyages. And the government, of course, intends to build a gas hub right at that point. And this is also, as I said last week, right in the mouth of the Rainbow Serpent, which is one of the most sacred areas that exists for the original people of this nation. So there's a very specific reason, I would suggest, folks, that the government is allowing this to happen at this particular point, because there are obviously other places you could do it, and we don't need this anyway. And none of the population actually want it to go ahead. We've got 70% of Australians speaking out against things such as coal seam gas mining, and still the government says that they need to go through it because it's for the good of the people. We've got some carbon tax propaganda that's been posted on the Avas website as well. It's uh, Climate Hope is now seen in Australia and it's getting people to sign up to say, yes, we want carbon tax because it's only Rupert Murdoch who doesn't want carbon tax because he owns all these dirty companies. And people don't realise that most of these companies will not pay the carbon tax. The people will. It's not about holding companies accountable. It's about enslaving the human race. And the concept of man-made climate change is a complete myth anyway. And it's very notable that on the Avas website, most of the signatures that they're getting on the site do not come from Australia, they come from overseas, because, of course, these are not the people who will have to be paying the carbon tax. That duty comes to the Australian people. And it's lovely how Avas has set up a website and is garnering signatures from overseas that all say Australians should pay carbon tax. And it's very likely that this whole initiative and this whole petition has been set up by the criminal Gillard government in order to try to justify the barefaced lies that Julia Gillard told in order to steal the office that she now holds on false promises. And it's truly incredible how anyone could buy into carbon tax anyway. I mean, yes, Julia, come and take our money from us and pay it to the companies who created all of the problems. That's what we want you to do, of course. Because really, when you look through these huge energy magnates and all of these incredibly corrupt corporations that have caused most of the problems we face on the planet, what you find is that the main profiteer in all of these instances has been the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund and the people who financed all of these ventures. And this is all the same banking cartels that we pay all of our taxes to. So they've managed to create a situation where they can now make us pay for their misgivings and for all the damage that they have done to the planet by them presenting this completely false reality to society that they've been presenting to us for the last 50 years. 